Welcome! This is the mini lecture about vasopressin. This is an excerpt from the new to ICU membership where we teach critical care to new ICU nurses. And this is the mini lecture on vasopressin as a medication of choice. So vasopressin, it is made in primarily in the posterior pituitary gland. It is also called antidiuretic hormone, which you learned about in nursing school. You know, it does the increasing in fluid retention, which increases preload, but it is primarily made and stored in the posterior pituitary gland, which is related to your sympathetic nervous system. When we think about the sympathetic nervous system, nothing operates by itself, right? So the activated fight or flight response sets off a series of events, which has effects in all of these different organs, right? Which is why we never think about a medication as only doing one thing. So vasopressin, when it is working in coordination with the sympathetic nervous system, you're going to see effects in some of these target organs. However, the mechanism of action is a little different, which we're going to get into, but it's just important to see visually that medications have more than one effect. They do more than one thing, right? Okay. Where is vasopressin made? Vasopressin is made and stored in the posterior pituitary gland, primarily. It is also made and released in the adrenal glands, which the adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidneys, and it is stimulated to be released when there are higher levels of circulating catecholamines. In a previous lecture, we talked about catecholamines. The primary ones made by our body are epinephrine and norepinephrine, and then it is also made to a lesser extent in the heart as a response to elevated cardiac wall stress. So again, none of these medications do only one thing and they're not usually made in only one place. This is the visual representation of what we were just talking about. So vasopressin is made up here. You can see in the posterior pituitary gland, it is also made in the adrenal glands, which sit on top of those little kidney beans, and then also in the heart. So what does vasopressin do? It is a V1 and a V2 agonist. You probably have never heard <laughs> of the V1 and V2 receptor sites. That's okay. We're going to talk about it now. So V1 receptors are located in vascular smooth muscles. So when I was learning this, it was helpful for me to think like V vasculature. That just helped me when I was a new grad. So when you think about vascular smooth muscle, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about the blood vessels. So vascular smooth muscle, can, when it's constricted, it increases your blood pressure because you are squeezing down on those pipes. V1 receptors are in the vascular smooth muscle and in the pituitary gland. What about V2 receptors? V2 receptors are in the renal tubules, so in the kidneys. When agonized or activated, it causes fluid retention by increasing the permeability of the renal ducts, resulting in fluid retention. And then if you have more fluid circulating in your blood vessels, you typically have increased preload. And we talk about this in another lecture in the new to ICU membership, but increased circulating fluid volume is not a one-to-one -one thing as preload. Preload is talking about right ventricular stretch. Anyway, join us in the new to ICU membership. <laughs> okay, more about V1 receptors. V1 receptors are found in vascular smooth muscle in the systemic, splenic, renal, and coronary systems. They are also related in the myometrium and in platelets. So that's what we were talking about where when activated, there can be a little bit of vasopressin produced by the heart, but not very much. And it's important to note that it's related to platelets because it has things to do with clotting. This is more than you need to know as a new grad, but it is. I think it's important to teach the full picture than to boil it down. It is a G-coupled protein receptor medication. So when the G-coupled protein receptors are activated, the end result is an increase in the intracellular calcium, which is what causes that constriction. So when you think about vasoconstriction for most of these medications, you need to know, make a mental note that it's most likely a G-coupled protein receptor medication, which then the end result of that is an increase in the calcium in the intracellular space, which increases the vasoconstriction. So the mechanism there is that these G-coupled protein receptors are activated by the phospholipase C via the GQG protein, the G-coupled protein, which then it leads to the increase of the concentration of intracellular calcium. Calcium is very important. <laughs> In the pulmonary circulation, vasodilation is produced via nitric oxide release. So that's kind of a nice little side effect, right? All right, let me say that in a simpler language. Okay, so V1 receptors are primarily in the vasculature. When activated, it increases the concentration of calcium, which causes vasoconstriction. That's what you need to know. V2 receptors are found in the kidneys in the distal tubule and collecting ducts. They are also G-protein coupled receptors that stimulate 
GSG protein to activate denylate cyclase, increasing cyclic AMP, causing mobilization of the aquaporin channels. What do you need to know? It increases permeability and causes fluid retention. So you don't need to know all of it, but it is good to see the actual mechanism. So what does vasopressin do? It causes vasoconstriction and it increases fluid retention. Fun fact, <laughs> V2 receptors are key in preventing hemorrhage because V2 receptors are also in the endothelial cells. And when activated, they release von Willebrand factor and factor eight. So when you we get into the anticoagulation and the bleeding and trauma modules, which I believe is gonna be in February of 2023 in the new to IC membership, we're gonna talk coagulation factors, which is going to be super fun. But von Willebrand prevents factor three from breakdown in plasma. So it's really important for binding platelets. You will see sometimes patients who are very critically ill with deficiencies, like you'll see the deficiency with the von Willebrand factor. There's a couple of really interesting coagulopathy things, but again, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, it's just fun to know that vasopressin is related to this as well. So in one sentence, I tried to, we do big picture, then we zoom it in. So vasopressin, AKA antidiuretic hormone, is primarily in stored and released from the posterior pituitary gland, and it causes vasoconstriction by agonizing V1 receptor sites on vascular smooth muscle and causes fluid reabsorption and increases preload by increasing reabsorption in the distal tubules of the kidneys via V2 agonist. We're gonna say it even simpler, in an even simpler way. Vasopressin is a V1 and a V2 agonist, is stored mostly in the posterior pituitary gland, and increases vascular smooth muscle constriction and increases fluid retention. This is what you need to be able to verbalize as a new grad. And you should also be able to verbalize where the V1 and V2 receptors are and what they do. Why do we use vasopressin? So it causes vasoconstriction and increases circulating fluid volume. And it is not notable for beta-1 and beta-2 beta agony. So in patients who are super sick with vasopelagia or dilated out blood vessels, sepsis or shock of most kinds, Vasopressin is usually a second line vasopressor. Usually norepinephrine is the first line choice. The dosage is also interesting. It is not a weight-based, it's just in units. So it's a fixed medication, fixed rate medication at 0.01 to 0.04 units per minute. It's usually not RN managed. However, I will say, I mean, I'm just a student, but I think there's no reason my under my current understanding is that we should eventually move towards weight-based medications for everything. So it'll be interesting to see if that practice changes in the future. Vasopressin one more time. Vasopressin one more time. Okay, so vasopressin is a V1 and a V2 agonist stored mostly in the posterior pituitary gland, and it causes vascular smooth muscle constriction and it increases fluid retention, which is a great way for you to be able to talk about it as a new grad. This is also a good review for applying to CRNA school. Vascular smooth muscle, just a quick little review of the anatomy of vascular smooth muscle. The, these are the different layers of that vasculature. The tunica media, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, is most significant when it comes to maintenance of blood pressure via systemic vascular resistance. And it maintains blood pressure by manipulating the diameter of certain vessels. The smooth muscle receives innervation from the SNS. And when the body needs to direct blood to a specific organ system or when the blood pressure is too low or high, the smooth muscle cells receive signals to have a greater or a lower tone of contraction in the specific capillary beds of organs, which again is part of why it's so important for you to have good vascular health, which the innervation happens at like that innermost layer of the blood vessel. So if you have adipose buildup or calcification of the tissue, then it's not as good at reading those sensings from the SNS. Just a kind of fun additional fact. I think I'm going to go back and say this one more time. <laughs> vasopressin is a vasopressin is a V1 and a V2 agonist stored mostly in the posterior pituitary gland, causes vascular smooth muscle constriction and increases fluid retention. And then back over here, I made a couple of charts about the mechanism of action of different vasopressors. This is in the new to ICU membership, and we also give people our little cards to refer to about dosage and mechanism of action considerations. And that is where I'm gonna end this lecture. Please join us in the new to ICU membership where we go over all of the vasopressors, all of the antihypertensives, antiarrhythmics, sedation, pain, and everything from how to give report to how to write a cover letter to the mechanism of action of epinephrine. So come join us in the new to ICU membership on confidentcareacademy.com.